Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminolly, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, I've got a review for you of The Rats by James Herbert. So this is the second in my Carry On Screaming series of videos where I'm reviewing uh, British horror novels from the 70s, 80s and 90s. So I started last month with a book called The Irish Witch by Dennis Wheatley, which came out in 1973. Uh, this month I've got for you The Rats, as I said, by James Herbert, which came out in 1974. Um, this is a fantastic book, and I think it's a fantastic book, not necessarily because it's particularly well written, um, but because of its impact on the horror genre, particularly in the UK. So when this book came out, I don't think there'd have been anything like it um, certainly nothing like it that had achieved the, the level of success that it did um, so you know when I talked about the Dennis Wheatley book last last month um, I talked about how the fact it you know it felt very traditional it's really kind of as much a historical adventure as it is a horror novel um, and it's you know quite slow paced and pedestrian um, and just feels incredibly traditional the rats is the complete opposite of that it's extremely fast paced it's extremely gory it's to an extent socially conscious it doesn't always um, manage to do a good job of that um, but it's got a, a, a kind of raw anger to it um, that's definitely missing from the weekly book um, so I think as I say I think this is a really important book I think it really shook up um, publishing in the UK um, because when it came out it, it was a massive success and launched a very successful career for James Herbert so it was his first book um, you know he published dozens of books um, and was a you know a mainstay in the bestseller list for years and years um, and it spawned so many um, you know kind of copies and similar books so the kind of animals attack um, genre and, and remember this came out around the same time as Jaws so you had Jaws as the uh, if you like kind of slightly tamer um, one big animal type of uh, animal attacks book and this as the really nasty lots of little animals uh, animal attacks type book um, I think between them they really you know made that a mainstay of of kind of popular culture for you know for decades to come really um, so what's it about anyway so it's it's set in London um, and as you might have guessed it's about a plague of rats uh, attacking London um, so the, the main character is a school teacher um, who works in a kind of uh, like inner city school and he's his heart's in the right place he's quite a tough guy for a school teacher um, but he's also kind of socially conscious and he's trying to you know do the best for the kids at the school and, and, and improve their lives um, and he ends up getting involved in these attacks because there's an attack at the school fairly early on in the book um, but right from the start this um, you know it it shows the reader what kind of book it's trying to be so there's a and a, the, the first attack I think it is in the book is the rats attacking a baby and it is absolutely horrific um, and it just continues from there um, and that's the thing that James Herbert does so well so his characters are a bit two-dimensional um, his plotting can be really plodding at times um, and it, it's not so much of a problem in this book because it's quite short, but in some of his later books, there are kind of sequences that are just kind of feel like padding and, and aren't that interesting when he's just trying to move the plot along. But his set piece horror scenes are phenomenal. And there's one scene in this in particular where the rats attack a tube train, which is just outstanding. I mean, it's genuinely gripping, it's cinematic, it's horrific, it's so, so good. Um, so he is, I think, a really excellent writer of, um, of set pieces. And I think that's what you remember about his books. So I remember certainly as a kid, um, people talking about James Herbert books at school, you know, and at lunchtimes and things. Even when I was really quite young, people saying their older siblings had read his books um, and relaying these set piece scenes um, some of which turned out not to be true, <laughs> I've, I've later found out as I've read the books. Um, but yeah, he, he's so good at that kind of thing. And it's similar to, um, if you think of like a lot of the horror movies from the 70s and 80s, particularly like Italian horror movies, where, you know, the acting was pretty ropey, the stories weren't that great, but the set piece gore scenes were phenomenal. And those are the things you remember and they're really effective. And, and Herbert does that brilliantly. Um, and one of the, there was an interesting quote I found from him where, 
where he talks about kind of his approach to violence and he considers himself to be or considered because he's passed away now considered himself to be you know not not into violence if you like um not a proponent of you know the use of force to solve problems and things like that but he said that the kind of violence he really disliked uh, and thought didn't really have a place in um in the kind of books he wanted to write was like tom and jerry or john wayne style violence is how he referred to it so you know the kind of violence from cowboy movies where you see you know 50 people get shot and they just fall over um and you never understand the impact of that violence on you know their families and things like that so the rats is the opposite of that the, the violence in this feels very raw um very real um, and, it, you know, you feel the, the pain of the characters and, and the fear and pain of the characters who, who are left behind as well. Um, so I think it's a really powerful and effective book uh, for that reason. Um, the other thing that's really interesting about it is, so it's written in 73, which is, uh, sorry, 74, um, which, you know, is a long time ago now. One of the things that's interesting is you can really feel the... Um, the shadow of the Second World War looming over this book. So, you know, there are scenes set on bomb sites. So there's a scene with some homeless people who get attacked by the rats um, at a bomb site, for example. Um, and, you know, for me, the 70s, because it was a decade I was born, doesn't feel that close to the Second World War, if that makes sense. Whereas clearly it was a lot closer to the Second World War than it is to the present day. Um, so it's interesting that that, you know, very much feels part of the London um, of this book is, uh, you know, the, the destruction that was caused by, the, you know, the bombing of London during World War II. Um, and it's a book that does a really good job of portraying London as well. It feels like um, the kind of grimy, um, kind of slightly impoverished place that, you know, many parts of London were in the 1970s when, the, when this book came out. So Herbert definitely feels like he's kind of tapping into that. Um, and it feels like quite a realistic book because of that there's no sugar coating at all in this book um you know he talks about deprivation he talks about the um and in indeed that you know the fact that the rats are able to attack people so easily is often down to um the fact that the people are poor and you know there's you know for example there's you know homeless people who are, who are sleeping outside as i said um so they you know make easy prey for the rats so um there's a lot of um there's a lot of stuff in here that's interesting and um, you know, slightly more interesting than you would expect from a book about killer rats. So I do think it's a good read. It does, as I say, it, it does plod a bit at times. The characters aren't great. The only really memorable character is the school teacher. Um, and even he's, you know, fairly wooden. And whilst the characters aren't necessarily that great, he do, the one thing he does do a very good job at is creating, very quickly creating characters who you get enough of a sense of um, that when they then get horrifically um, murdered by the rats, you do feel a bit of sympathy for them. So, you know, he, he gives you characters and in a couple of pages will give you a life story for them, give you their background, let you know why they're in the place that they are in their lives. Um, and then the rats swoop in <laughs> and eat them. Um, so he, do, he does do that well. And that helps the set pieces be even more effective, I think. So yeah, great start to James Herbert's career. And I'll be talking about him again next month in Carry On Screaming uh, when I talk about his book from 1975, The Fog. Okay, time for a random book from the shelves. Uh, one I haven't got around to reading yet. Uh, See What I Have Done by Sarah Schmidt, uh, which is about Lizzie Borden. So I did years and years ago read a book about Lizzie Borden by Evan Hunter, uh, who's one of my favourite writers, um, which was really, really good. So interesting to see um, this more modern take on the Lizzie Borden story. And it is a really nice looking book as well. I do really like books with coloured edging to the pages. I don't know why. Um, it's not the sort of thing I would expect myself to like, but I do always think it looks really nice. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, I said earlier that the, uh, the rats spawned lots of imitators. It also had three sequels. Um, so there was Lair um, and Domain, both of which are novels. And then there was a graphic novel as well, The City, uh, which I never read. And I've just looked and it seems to go for quite a lot of money on eBay nowadays. So um, I'm a bit disappointed with myself for not having bought a copy when they were readily available. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what that's like. But if anyone out there has read The City, um, do let me know if it's if it's worth reading. Uh, there was also a movie adaptation of The Rats called Deadly Eyes, which I think was Canadian. Um, and there was a video game as well. So I will flash up some uh, pictures of the, I think it's 1980, 80s video game version um, of the rats which I have to say I never played I don't know if it was supposed to be any good or not but um, maybe someone out there has played it and they can they can say in the comments uh, whether they thought it was a good game um, but yeah let me know if you've read the rats let me know if you're a James Herbert fan um, and as always thanks very much for watching hope you're safe from out there I hope you're reading good stuff 
and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.